So to review the rule for tangent and secant, what we had was the following. If you have even powers of secant, you want to keep secant squared. So you want to do u equals tangent and then du is secant squared. If you do, if you have odd powers of tangent and some secants floating around, um, okay, that's barely on the thing, then you want to do u equals secant because what you want to do is you want to pull off one of your tangents to be part of your dx. I'm sorry, you du. And then you have an even bunch of tangents, and you can change them all to secant. Let me fix this so it's a little bit. Okay, there we go. So in this integral above, we have both of these situations. So you can do it either way. And this is something we talked about with the sines and cosines, but I didn't do an example like that. Um, but so we might as well do the example with tangents and secants. Okay, do a similar example. So, in fact, we can do this both ways. Okay, so let's do it the first way first. We're going to pull off the secant squared to be my u. That's going to leave me with secant to the fourth. And then my u du is secant squared. So I'm going to write that over here and then I'm going to erase this so I have some more board space. u was going to be tangent and then du we're going to use as secant squared. Alright, so get rid of this. So because my u is tangent, I want to change all the secants of tangents and to make my life easier, I'll just write this here. Okay, I'm going to change my secants all to tangents. That's going to give me tangent cubed and then 1 plus secant squared x. No, what did I do? Yes, wrong. I meant to write tangent squared x plus 1 squared, right, because secant of the fourth is secant squared squared, right? And then I'm just going to leave this guy here. Now I can make my u substitution that I wrote over there. So I've got u cubed, u squared plus 1 squared, du. So let me add these guys up, 7, 5, 3, and then integrate, I've got 1 eighth u to the 8 plus 2 fifths u to the 5th plus 1 fourth u to the 4th, and then putting in u equals tangent of x gives me tangent to the a and two-fifths uh, tangent to the fifth plus one-fourth tangent to the fourth plus three. So there's my answer. Okay. So the point also of doing this example was, as I said, oh, we can do it the other way as well. In other words, instead of making the substitution u equals tangent of x, we can make the substitution u equals secant of x, and then du is secant x tangent x. So let's go ahead and erase this bit.
and do it the other way and see what happens. Okay, so I'm pulling off one secant and one tangent. So that's going to give me tangent squared x secant to the fifth x. And then I've got secant x tangent x dx. This guy, right? So what I want to do now, because I am using u equals secant, I want to change everything but this stuff into secants. So that means changing tangent squared. All right, so that's not too bad, right? Because that's just going to be secant squared minus 1. And then I have secant to the 5. And then I have my du. So when I make my substitution, I'm going to do u squared minus 1 times u to the 5 du. Okay. <coughs> so then we have u to the 7 minus u to the 5. So if I integrate this, I get 1 8 u to the 8 minus 1 6 u to the 6. And then if I put back in what u is, I'm going to have my answer. Secant to the 8, 1 8 secant to the 8 minus 1 6 secant to the 6 plus c. So as I was saying in, I think, the first video, when I kind of mentioned this, that sometimes you can do it more than one way, obviously my answer looks different, right? Because the first answer was all tangents, and this answer is all secants. Um, <clears throat> you can spend quite a bit of time trying to change them from one to the other, and eventually you will succeed, but then you need, there's a lot of algebra involved. However, because... Essentially, what you're doing is you're using this uh, identity, right? So we can change from tangents to secants using this identity. But if I want to change from secant to the eighth power into tangent to the eighth power, right, I'm going to have to be uh, taking this whole thing to the fourth power. It's just going to be pretty ugly, right? So I'm never going to ask you to do that. But just sort of thinking about it, you can imagine oh, well, that's going to work out somehow. And um, you, can, you could then show that those two expressions are the same up to a constant. There is going to be a difference to a constant. But up to a constant, they're the same. And if this was a definite integral, then it wouldn't matter which expression we used, which way we did, as long as we did everything correctly, right? As long as we got our negative in the right place and we... Um, multiply everything correctly, did our integral right, when you evaluated them, either one, you would still get the same answer.